Well, here we are, Thursday morning. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it, could you? Yesterday, up here in Devon and all, they had all that snow. But we've had some rain again in the night, but there we are. Now, don't forget, this Saturday, clocks go forward. So, uh, not later evenings, anyhow. <clears throat> Salvation Army's on today, 10 till 12 o'clock. So, go down there and have a nice cup of tea. But I hope everybody's okay. Staying well. Well, I'm feeling better. I've got my voice back now. I suppose that's upsetting for a few people, but there we are. That's what we got to. I'm glad I'm feeling. Oh, I'm on the. I'm on the men. That's the most important. Now, a birthday today is David Ken's. Is his birthday today? Now tomorrow is Rosie Harbert. Tomorrow is her birthday. Happy birthday to you! And of course, my dear relation of hers, Maggie Smitherum, is her birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to you tomorrow, Maggie, and you have a lovely day. And on Saturday is Olivia Pello, our lovely. Uh, gardening lady there over on the walk does a fantastic job I, i'm really you know it's lovely all have a lovely time now i'm going to do a couple of david prouses today for a bit change a couple of um poems this one's called a valentine i only ever sent this one old jam was telling me a use was i with gormless foolish ways fenella was a strapping mad unfortunate in looks seemed destined to be single all her days to her I sent this valentine, intended as a joke. The words I wrote upon it still remain. I'll marry you, my darling, for my heart is yours to keep. And all you have to do is find my name. I thought no more about it, merely chuckled to myself. But poor Fenella took it all to mind. And broadcast from the village store for all the world to hear the contents of this silly valentine. For weeks I kept my head down whenever she came close. Till the woman's institute bizarre. I thought I'd take a look around, but there upon a stool, Fenella sat with buckets and a jar. With tickets in a jar, not buckets, with tickets in a jar. Come and buy some raffle tickets, Jan, she squawked to me. So I handed her a bob to keep the peace. But as I signed the raffle book and gave her back the stubs, you think the hounds of hell had been released. She kicked away the stool and threw her arms around my neck. I'll swear she had a grip like Clance's bear. I recognised that writing she was bawling in my ear till I wrenched away and left her standing there. Upon my trusty bike I jumped like a scolded tabby cat and paddled like a demon down the road. I never once looked back towards nor as much as paused for breath till the tires beneath me threatened to explode. Twas months before it all died down, a letter came from home to say Fenella's house was up for sale. The coast is clear, my mother said. She'll bother you no more. She's gone to be a missionary in hell. So take this as a warning. If you stir a woman's heart, don't meddle with the ones that you dislike. Don't tamper with affections. You have no desire to win. And never send a valentine's unless you ride a bike. This one's a class apart. All the old faces and all the old names were gathered in noisy communion, swapping their stories of years long ago, for this was our schoolboy reunion. Spotty Oscombe was there with his trousers half mast and a visage untouched by a razor. I knew him at once by the fuzz on his chin, and I'll swear the same tatty old blazer. Potty Penrose had a glass in his hand and one in reserve on the table. He'd once guzzled Vimto as though hollow legged, with gin he seemed quite able, equally able. Behind a carnation as red as his cheeks, I spotted forgetful Pengilly. His tie had a struggle to reach round his neck, as did too his belt with his belly. Forgetful, says I. How's the missus these days? Oh, not happy, said he, looking solemn. I was bringing her down, but we stopped for a meal, and I left her behind in St. Column. And there was old Jan, looking worried and tense, and somewhat unusually flustered. Oh, where's Searle, he asked. He still builds me a grudge for the time I put glue in his custard. And just at that moment, Big Searle appeared and fastened on Jam with a bellow. Trabascas, he cried, Jam pointed in light. Over there by the bar, that's the fellow. In no time at all, there were trouble afoot, as the feelings of old reignited. Those scores and those grudges long salted away were dragged from the depth and recited. But dear Mr. Argreaves, now stupid and frail, with his elbows still coated in leather, called out, Come on now, boys, now form up in lines. And we'll all sing this school song together. And the mood of the moment was suddenly changed. We sang till our stamina faltered. Mr. Arcreaves looked on with a tear and remarked, Oh, such fools. 
but so little is altered. Have a nice weekend and have a lovely Easter. Take care.